Hey everyone and welcome back to the channel. So today I wanted to hit on a topic that is a bit different. It's one asked by many. Why is Apex Legends so hard? Why is it difficult? As we ask this question, we're also going to provide quick tips to counter that and what we can really do to improve. In some situations, you know, especially with like third parties, there's really not much, but we're going to do our best today. Hopefully this will resonate with you. Maybe you'll see a topic here. This is going to be a longer video because I realize that there's a lot of topics. I think there's like 15 plus on why Apex Legends is so difficult, but maybe it'll help you feel a lot more comfortable in the game knowing that you're not alone and that there's others that run into a lot of difficult things. But hey, it's a plus side of the game because it provides a lot of depth. So with that, I'm going to provide timestamps with each topic. I'll do my best to cover it quickly and again, provide logic best I can. Give me feedback again on what you find difficult. Perhaps I didn't cover everything here in this specific video. I did my best, but don't forget to leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and also turn on notifications so you don't miss a single upload. Now, one of the frustrating things to cover while I have a ton of topics here is imagine all of these things that you have to improve upon. Then imagine somebody who's missing one of these core components and then squatting up with them and how frustrating can be especially when you're doing your best when maybe somebody else may not be doing their best or maybe they're trolling maybe they're not trolling maybe they're new to the game maybe you don't want to be patient for it but again it can be incredibly frustrating even for seasoned players or even newcomers to the game that are invested and you run into the situation but remember to i can't stress enough be patient so let's start off with a simple one and that's about aiming which is a topic we cover heavily on this channel aim and tracking what makes Apex Legends different is the amount of time it takes to down an opponent, which makes it much more difficult compared to your average video game. Games like Call of Duty or Battlefield, enemies go down fairly quickly. As long as you get the shot in the general area, you're going to down an opponent. What is different is the amount of tracking in Apex Legends that you have to do after the fact. Now, I didn't obviously bring up CSGO or Valorant because also in those games, what makes it incredibly difficult is positioning and also cutting corners and being smart of guessing where your opponent's going to be. Obviously with the battle royale, it's a little different. So this hits on those muscles and consistencies where it may not be exactly comfortable for you in a game like Apex Legends, having to track a little longer or perhaps controlling the recoil longer in a scenario and also having to continuously track. It's a little different for Apex, especially when somebody has a red armor or a purple armor or they're healing up and they're right back into the fight, or especially when you run into a Gibraltar and you have to track for an extended period of time. But also, this is why Apex Legends is so fun and satisfying, that especially when you nail that R99, that spray, and you did it well, it can be, it's like ASMR essentially, and it can be really, really fun. Now, next up is landing properly and loadout. In any battle royale, landing properly is always a problem, especially for newcomers. Getting there first is key, because if you're first, well, then you get the most loot, you'll get more attachments. And for those that are inexperienced, this can take several hours just to get used to, especially if you've never done a battle royale. If you have, eh, you're fine, you know? But if you're new to gaming in general, this can be pretty overwhelming because you don't get the luxury of having the game just spawn you in. You are in charge of your spawn. And because if you spawn quote unquote incorrectly or land incorrectly, this could really screw you up. This puts you at a massive disadvantage. I remember in PUBG, I would roll up and forget what's back in the meta even. If I landed and I didn't know my weapon loadout or what to pick up, I remember running a UMP or a Winchester thinking that that was a really good weapon. The same logic applies to Apex Legends. Imagine somebody was using an RE45 for an extended period of time and they passed off an R99. Or perhaps they're using a P2020 without a hammer point and not utilizing the correct loadout. Or perhaps they're landing in a spot that may not have the best loot and they grab that loot and they go into an engagement right after versus an area that has higher priority. Well, these are factors that are going to hurt you in the long run in Apex Legends. Really, the only solution is, is to find a fast guide on how to drop. Then going to the test range and playing with all the attachments and getting comfortable with various guns and seeing what the upsides and downsides to each of the weapons are and then memorizing it. Now, the segue to the next point, finding loot. This is a great segue again because when new players land... Maybe you land properly, but you land in a spot that just doesn't have high tier loot. It's important to understand areas that do have better loot tables for them because that's going to help you come out of the situation much better. The downside to doing this, obviously, is you're going to run into a lot more enemies and that can be very overwhelming. It's a lot of trial and error. When you see huts on King's Canyon, you can assume there's going to be light ammo, an HCOG, and perhaps an accelerant. Whenever you see houses, you can assume there's going to be a gun inside, maybe a battery, more high tier weapons. Or let's say perhaps you go find a blue bin, you know that there's most likely going to be some healing items in there. 
Really the solution is trial and error, finding out where loot is going to be located, see how pros land, see how your favorite content creator drops, and where they find ammo. I mean, there's some areas specifically where you can find sniper ammo or sniper guns all the time. This happens in Olympus, as well as other maps where you'll find specifically certain guns or attachments in various areas. Now this comes with a lot of time. I know if I explain loot, you could literally spend hours and a YouTube video explaining just how much loot there is in a specific area, what's there in the probability, and it can be very overwhelming. With that, there's a lot of memorizing that goes into place, right? Memorizing the map. Like any first person shooter, we all remember the moment we first hop into a new game and then we're trying to figure out the map, where's the best points, where are the choke points, how can I play to my advantage? Now multiply that by like 10. Because obviously with any Battle Royale, this kind of applies not even just to Apex Legends, but understanding that the map is massive in scale, the zone closes, and knowing where your optimal positioning is going to be. Because maybe you don't know the map in this one spot in the zone and realize that, oh, across the way there was height. Or I didn't know that there was this one small nook that I can hide in and be a lot more patient. So really the solution is land in as many different spots as humanly possible. Now the downside is that this takes a lot of time. This could take hours upon days. Of memorizing an area depending on how comfortable you are with first person shooters like an example would be quake quake is a really great example where if you know the map and you know when stuff spawns when you know when loot will appear or where the armor is and you kind of create a flow then you will be much better than the average player that's really important the same thing happens with a game like apex legends so i definitely relate it to that now next up is understanding your role in the squad this is important especially with having to either be more patient or less patient, it's, let's give an example like the infamous Sweaty Wraith. They're naturally going to be the frag of the group and go in first because they can queue back. Or a Horizon who can take height and take an off angle. But let's say you play Lifeline or Caustic or any support role, you're usually gonna be last into the fight. Meaning you need to be right up on the Wraith, wait for them to make a push, or if you make the push first and you can't utilize your res, you can't utilize your utility. This is important and most people kind of miss this. This is really more important to tournament play, and understanding your role within the squad. And also, if you understand your role within the squad and you're not going in first, what weapons you're loading out with. Perhaps if you're a support character, maybe you need to utilize a sniper or a G7 or DMR of that nature to get some of the entry damage to whenever your rape does go in. Or if you are playing a support character and all you have is ranged weapons and you have a shotgun, but you're not running in close range, well then you have to understand that role and reconfigure it. And make sure you're utilizing guns that help. So the solution is, Take, take your gameplay to another level by recording. See what re went wrong, the problem of where you made mistakes and when you pushed in or what you did not push in. Did you spend too much time looting? Understand your role and what you can do to support your squad. That one's really difficult and takes a lot of time to get used to. Now here's another one, speaking of which, of who you get paired with is skill-based matchmaking. This is a good segue because upon Apex Legends, maybe the first gameplay of like, you know what, this isn't half bad. Maybe this is all good. But as Apex puts you into a category and maybe you're a semi experienced first person shooter player, the lobbies become full of sweats. The experience from the first few games is now gone. You now have to think about each encounter. Let's say you are a new player of the game and you have to improve an accelerated rate, but fine, now you're absolutely getting dumpstered on and not progressing. This is difficult to understand. So, really, the tip and advice is. You are improving. You are getting better at the game, but the problem is that you're facing better players in your lobby. So it can really feel like you're taking a step back. Listen, you could spend 100 hours in Kovacs and get really better aim, but then face other players in the lobby where they are have just equal of aim because now you're getting faced against better players. Kind of ruins that experience if you want to play casually. I understand that can be very frustrating, but nonetheless, it's just something important to really be aware of is skill-based matchmaking. So third parties, ah uh, yes, the dreaded third parties. Infamous in every battle royale, but the pacing of Apex Legends is naturally faster in some ways with abilities to help you move in and move out of encounters. Abilities can be used to get out of a fight, but of course they can be used to get you right back in. Just using Octane's jump pad as an example, or Rafe's portal, or using Horizon's ultimate to get people to pull right back in. This one's very frustrating for newcomers in general. I mean, even for seasoned players, third parties, there's really nothing you can do to stop it. People are going to do it because it's quote unquote, the easiest strategy you can use to win a fight is by being the one that's not focused. It's the most basic concept of terms of strategy, right? Kind of goes with our survival instincts, but some tips though, 
Whenever you get into a fight and you win, loot faster. Don't window shop, or perhaps don't get greedy and just get out and reposition. Maybe you don't even need the loot right away. When do you just need to wait for the third party to come in and fight them afterwards? Wait for knocks on the screen before engaging. Be smart about it. Maybe they're just taking shots at a distance and you'll become the sandwich. Be aware of the positioning and what is going on, rather than just blindly going in. Use utility to recover. Use Gibby Bubble for positioning. Maybe you got to res a teammate. Use the Wraith Portal to get the team out into a whole different spot. Or utilize a utility like Horizon's ult to stop a team from pushing. Or use them to use it to get them right back in when you know they're trying to recover. There's so much here, even Octane's jump pad like we mentioned. So a lot here to unpack, and it's important because most new players don't utilize this, and it can be frustrating for seasoned players when they don't utilize your utility. Example, you'll be with a bubble, Gibby, and you say, please drop your bubble, please res me, please save me, or a lifeline who's not using their res either can be very frustrating for the team. Now this goes into not panicking and keeping calm. This is big for those getting to Apex or any Battle Royale, so let me go ahead and say that I remember my first time on a Battle Royale game. It really feels like forever, and I remember shaking a bit. This is a long time ago, though. Maybe... 10 years ago, but you go further back. Remember your first video game when you first won and maybe in a racing game, you got the blood flowing. There's a rush. That's why we play video games. But imagine a newcomer into the space of gaming today with how experienced players are and how overwhelming that feels. It's really a scary moment as you improve and you run into literally a good player in a game. Maybe it's a, a famous player or maybe a content creator or a pro player anything and you see the name it could definitely be overwhelming and scary at first but you have to realize these are your colleagues you're all playing the same game the only way to solve this by not panicking is to just push through not make mistakes hot drop and just have fun then use those exercises again to help improve that's important here's another one being patient versus being campy but overall you're not getting into enough fights to learn there's a huge moment for you third party you see how many teams are coming there's a moment you have to be patient to utilize the right opportunity to get into the fight or know when you have to leave. So this is something players all struggle with, knowing how to get into a fight and then knowing when you need to bail, and when you need to get greedy with loot, when you don't need to get greedy with loot. The issue is that newcomers are too fearful and sometimes they freeze on these dire moments. And it's scary because you only have one life and the round is over before you know it. The only solution here is making mistakes like we said prior. This one is hard, so see it in so many games because it's easier to camp and just wait and just freeze rather than being strategic, engaging in the moment, using your port, using your Gibby Bubble, rotating out, getting shots in, calming and saying somebody's low here. And it can, for a new, new person, it's like, oh my god, there's a million things happening, what's going on? We get it, I get it, it's overwhelming, but it's something, putting yourself in the high pressure situation consistently rather than just camping and being scared, being out there is always going to help you more in any situation. Of course, be smart about it. Be strategic. Don't just go full send it when there's no reason to full send it and just throw yourself on the open. There's a difference between being brave and then being strategic and how you're going to go into an encounter. Now, another one that's pretty overwhelming is the movement on Apex Legends. As you improve your gameplay, it's very important to notate as I keep always saying the infamous word notate, we'll really just note just how hard it is obviously getting your aim down, but now you have to add the added element of movement, which in itself can be tough to really nail, nail down. It can be much more difficult on controller and even movement compared to mouse and keyboard. Each input again has its pros and cons. This is a big debate in itself, which one's better. There's pros and cons to it, looting faster, having aim assist versus not, but let's not get into that mold. But the solution here, go into this test range, practice, Get comfortable. Just get used to the movement of the game, especially when it comes to tap strafing, bunny hopping, anything along those lines. Practice it so when you actually are in the moment in game, you can utilize it to its full advantage. This is one of the situations in Battle Royale you're not going to utilize in every single moment. You're not going to wall bounce every single time. You're not going to bunny hop every single moment. But if you memorize it, you learn it, yeah, you'll get better. So practice it in the test range. Now, understanding legend abilities and recovering from hard situations. We've kind of talked about this before from recovering from hard situations, but the issue is that a lot of individual players don't understand the abilities. And this is gonna be difficult because now you have to add movement, positioning, aim. But when you have abilities like Pathfinder, Horizon, Gibby, understanding how long it takes to get into your queue or anything can be massive as you improve in the game. So you really need to go hop into those test range, practice those abilities, this one in terms of tips is looking at guides, testing the abilities, learning the timing, because those big things make a massive difference in your engagements and can be really hit and miss. You need to understand what your character can do 
And yes, understand what other legends can do. So perhaps you mastered one character, but you don't understand the utility of another character. You have to understand that synergy. So hop in the range, throw the abilities, know what it does and how to counter it and what it can or cannot do. So understanding positioning is another big one. This applies to any video game, but it's especially specific to Apex Legends, partly because understanding it's the optimal positioning can really make and break. For Apex Legends of Battle Royale, it's important to understand where the zone is going to close, but knowing where you can get the high ground or not. The reason so many pro tournaments and stuff, you see the end zone with a lot of squads in the general area, is that you let the zone and positioning do the work for you. Many pro players have said this before. I agree with the sentiment that you let the zone do the work for you, so then the other enemy team is at a disadvantage. You never necessarily want to go into an encounter where you're on equal footing, a full 50-50. The ideal situation is where you have either better loot, better positioning, better zone pull, anything along the lines to increase your odds of winning a gunfight. The solution is, is understanding where zone pulls, learning positions on the map, seeing what has a high ground, seeing what has no cover or any positioning, and realizing where is a place you don't want to be. Now this one is going to be short, but understanding video settings. This one's more specific to PC, so that's why I put it further down on the list, but it can be overwhelming to have a major list of settings and knowing which one impacts performance or not. It's really applicable to any game though. The fastest tip is to do research on each setting and see which one gives you better frame rate or latency and what's going to help you visually in game versus not. So sometimes maybe the graphic settings will be too low to the point where you just can't really decipher what you're looking at. So make informed decisions on your video settings because it, yes, it can make a massive impact. It's why personally I don't run anti-aliasing. I feel like with any game I play, anti-aliasing makes the screen very blurry and it reminds me how I feel when I'm not wearing glasses and it for me, it doesn't stimulate correctly. So I always remove the anti-aliasing because I prefer to see the jaggies. I don't care if the game doesn't look as pretty, but at least I can make out what I'm looking at. This is different for everyone, so find the best settings for you. There's not a one-size-fits-all here, but I just gave you an example of what pertains to me. Now, learning all the weapons and attachments. So I tied this together. I know we covered it briefly, so I'm going to cover this in less than a minute here. But understand the recoil. Know whenever you add a barrel stabilizer what it does. Also what a standard stock does. This requires research and once you've done it, you really should spend a little time with each gun in the test range because honestly, you never know the next time you're going to pick up that weapon or have all those attachments. So understand it is going to help you immensely, especially if you never had a level three purple mag and it's your first time playing, there's going to be a different recoil pattern. It's not different every time, but obviously R99 with only with no magazine, you only get a certain recoil pattern versus having a level three, then you get to see the full recoil pattern of that gun in general. So it's important. Attachments, weapons, all in all, important. Understand it, learn it. Now, my last point here, squad communication. Gosh, this one is really, really important. I, maybe I should have bumped this one up higher up, but having a microphone and talking with your squad can be really huge. Or just pinging correctly and understanding and being with your squad, knowing your positioning, asking these questions. Missing heals? You need ammo? Have your ultimate ability? Are you too far behind? Are you pushing into this fight? Are you backing out of this fight? This is such a squad based game. So, I mean, let's say you push into a fight and one guy just panics and is low and then completely bails and dips and you're still in the gunfight fighting as if you're all, all in it. Knowing when somebody leaves or when somebody gets in, when they're using a port and say, hey man, we're getting out of here, take the port. Or Gibby says, go into my, my bubble. There's a third party. Let's chill here. I'm going to throw the ult on top of us and we'll reposition. All of this is really important. So again, with everything we've talked about, I get why this can be really scary and overwhelming. The plus side is there is a good ping system on Apex Legends that they've created, but knowing when to use it and when not to use it can also be important. Don't just spam ping everything. You know, you can spam accidentally that there is an enemy squad there and then stop looting and then go over there and look and realize, oh, it was a mistake. Make sure you got your pings on lock. And that's important because it literally can be 30 seconds where somebody came over and they didn't loot or get heals and you get third partied and now you're at a disadvantage. You got to remember that everything plays out in a battle royale like it's a giant scripted fight in a way where there's 30 minutes in the round and realistically it's only going to play a certain way even maybe less depending on the end zone and how it plays out. So let's say 20-30 minutes because sometimes you never even see the end of the zone so I can't even say that it lasts you know that x y and z amount of time. But it is important to realize just how the fight is going to always play it a certain way. Everyone's always going to start with no loot. And then everyone's going to start rotating. Then everyone's going to start getting into fights. Then everyone's going to play patiently. And then there's going to be the last few squads and everyone's going to wait and be careful not to get sandwiched. All of it matters. 
Again, I know this is a longer video. I did my best to timestamp it, talk about some tips, guidance, everywhere it could. I took this all from Reddit, my polls, did some research online. I know the theme is, again, of this video, just playing, practice to get better. I mean, yeah, that's the theme. That's pretty much with everything. But I hope this provides insight where you can improve and maybe where you don't feel as discouraged from playing Apex Legends and know that even with every patch, that stuff does change and that the game does take a while for people to learn. Even whenever Horizon was first released on Apex Legends, I remember saying that she was an overpowered legend, but nobody believed me. I really said that she was going to be the new movement character. That she was that her tactical ability was going to replace Pathfinder, but nobody believed me on that front because it took some time to understand her utility and the effectiveness of it. That's why we've seen it get nerfed probably three times already with her tactical, and we saw in the patch notes that her ultimate ability is also going to get nerfed as well. The plus side is the game has a ton of depth when you're in it, and man is it addicting and a ton of fun. It's an incredibly rewarding experience to really clutch out a fight and get creative. It's why I personally return to this game time and time again. I really love Apex Legends. It's a game where I'm, that's why I keep creating content on it and really enjoy engaging with you guys as an audience. I always compare it to like a game like League of Legends. It's easy to learn initially, but the depth there, even as we talk about everything, is quite complex. So real quick guys, did I miss something in the video? Do you got a guide that you want to see me go more in depth with one of these topics? Be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe. I do my absolute best to interact with everyone in the comment section, so give me your feedback. I love to engage with you. I do my best to, to talk things out. And perhaps we can turn it into a positive video here on the channel. So again, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.